Welcome to the official catch up. Today I've got Kev Waugh, Berwick Rangers. How are you doing, Kev? I'm good, mate. How are you? Aye, good, good. Obviously, it's a nice sunny day outside. A wee bit gutted that you only get to go out once, obviously. Aye, exactly. I'm stuck in the house while it's sunny. You don't get that much of that in Scotland anyway. <laughs> How are you getting through this, Kev? Are you, are you keeping yourself busy? Uh, well, I'm still working here. I can work for Hamden now, uh, just on the laptop. So I'm keeping myself busy from 9 till 5. But after that, I'm driving myself insane. Aye. I believe. Uh, yeah, I'm the same, mate. I'm, unfortunately, I'm stuck at the house, eh? so I'm, I'm getting through and, and speaking to other lads, so it's keeping me going, like, but I, uh, I'm i not sure where I would be if I didn't have used boys to speak to, like. <laughs> uh, well, it's getting, the, the podcast is getting most of the guys through, through their days at work as well. I can ask sit and listen to podcasts during work and stuff like that just to get me through the days, so. Aye, uh, and that's why I'm doing them, mate. Eh? in hand. Aye, 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 exactly, and I've done about, I think I've done about over 30 now, eh, so I really appreciate the likes of yourself coming on, mate, it's, it's great, eh, so. Well, aye, it's good for us, like, it's good aye. for us. Well, I spoke to, as you know, I spoke to Lewis Barr uh, yesterday, I think, I'm, I'm losing track of the days, sometimes I'll not put the, the pods the, day, the days I do them, uh, obviously, because I've got a wee bit of a, a backlog, eh, so I'm uh, caught between editing and obviously speaking to folks sometimes, but. Uh, just in terms of yourself, Kev, obviously, you, you know the Lone League fairly well because you were on loan at Galaferry Dean Rovers a few seasons ago. You were obviously at, at Berwick on loan um, in the league and uh, Civil Service Strollers last season. But you, you really started your career at Hibs. You were a uh, Hibs uh, sort of pro youth, uh, if I'm right in saying that. Aye, uh, that's right. I was four years uh, full-time at Hibs. Uh, really lucky in terms of the group that I played with. We had a really good side. We won the league and the cup uh, a couple of years ago. Um, played in most of the games. Stood me a good stead. But the 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 loan moves to places like Gala, Berwick, Civil, they all helped me as much as as much as anything I done at Hibs. To be fair, so yeah. I have started both at Hibs, but a lot of my development came for these these loan moves that are that I made when I was younger. Yeah, and uh, Hibs, they always seem to be a team that are uh, keen to loan out boys to Lowland League teams. We've seen it with, like, uh, like, well, obviously Gala um, over the years and obviously Civil Service Strollers. But, no, nah, um, you know, um, I was a wee bit... I thought I thought you probably could have played higher up, to be honest, um, when you left Hibs. Uh, same with Rudy Payton, obviously. I thought he could have probably played a wee bit uh, higher up. Um, I, I'm assuming you got, like, loads of offers, but... What really attracted you to, to Berwick? Um, well, I did have a few offers in the summer, but for me, I felt like I almost had like unfinished business at Berwick. Obviously, I was at home loan before, and the loan move, it did not materialise how I hoped it was going to, uh, but there was I still met a lot of great people at the club, and then when the opportunity came for them to go back, it was sort of, it wasn't a, a done deal right away, but it was a case of, it was definitely one of my higher options because of both the size of the club and the people that work within the club. And yeah. then once I was getting to the stage in the summer, I was really bored of all this. Got to train with teams as trialists and people being on the phone and going to speak to loads of different people. I was really getting bored there. So the quicker that I was getting things done, the better. And then by the time I was going to make my decision, I just felt at the time that Berwick was probably the most suited to me. Yeah, and uh, yeah, when when you signed for Berwick, it was kind of I wouldn't say an eye opening signing, but like you know, I was I was quite happy for Berwick. I, I saw a wee bit of yeah, Civil last season. And thought you were you, you done really well, and uh, obviously, you know, I think you're get, getting a bit well known for it. But obviously, your your free your free kicks with the peg are <laughs> are uh, getting a bit feared around the league. I think. Oh, I was quite lucky actually because. I hit a few free kicks last year at Civil. I think there was one at East Kilbride where the goalie made an absolute wonder save. And then after that, I hit a few more. And, and it was my first free kick of the season against Bonnerick, first game of the season. And obviously, if you if your first free kick's a shanner, you've got no chance of getting on the next one. Um, but lucky, I scored the first one. And then, you know, a few after that went in. I've been really close with a few other ones that actually haven't went in. But, um, aye, I'm wasn't he scored whenever I can doesn't matter what it is whether it's a free kick a three yard tap and I didn't get that many but if it is a 25 yard free kick then even better yeah yeah definitely mate. and have you noticed um, well it's probably uh, 
uh, a lot of the lads say I'll always say the same, but I'm assuming you've obviously noticed the quality since maybe your time at Gala, um, you know, uh, to to now, like at uh, the Lowland League, how 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 different it is in terms of quality and and the standard the uh, standard players that have been attracted to the league. It's ridiculous. I think it's ridiculous the, the quality that's in the league now. Um, obviously, I've seen it. So when I was a young boy at Gala, the league was all right. It was decent. It wasn't terrible, but it's night and day now as far as I'm concerned and that's why you're getting people like you in that's in our team uh, coming down to play at this level because it is a good level it is a good level there's good players here there's good sides here good managers and so it's an attractive league to play and it's as attractive a league as some of the, the lower leagues in Scotland as far as I'm concerned because of the quality that is here massively night and day over the last three, four years anyway yeah, definitely. I mean, and even for me, I mean, I've only really been involved in the Lowland League, you know, the past two seasons. And, it, and even from last season to, to this season, it's just been, uh, you know, guys like, as you mentioned, Ewan Smith going to Berwick, uh, Danny Galbraith going to Gala. And then obviously you've got the, you know, the likes of East Stollinshire bringing in uh, Nicky Lowe and, and, and Kelty bringing in like Dylan Easton and Nathan Austin. It's, uh, you know, it's, uh, it's brilliant for the money you pay because if you were to go to like maybe a Caden Beef and pay you know 15 quid uh, you I'd probably always prefer going to like Sakelty or, or somewhere like that to because I think you're seeing the same if not better standard of football and and, and uh, no disrespect but in some respects uh, better players oh yeah I definitely agree definitely agree the quality that Kelty teams like Kelty and that have got is ridiculous way above probably the level that they're at but they're at this level and at the end of the day I'd, I think if you ask most of the Kelty players I don't think they could turn around and say aye this league is easy you know it's, it's been tough for them as well Bonnerig have pushed them all the way uh, or well they have until they've stopped playing obviously but yeah. um, I, I agree Kel, you, you look at teams like Kelty and that and you wouldn't bet against them if they were playing against any team in League 2 yeah, absolutely not. I and mean, we've obviously seen it with the likes of uh, Edinburgh City doing so well since they've been in league football, and then you know Cove Rangers, you know, running away with it, League Two uh, before before all this and whatnot. But uh, what's the what's what's the feeling like at Berwick at the moment? I mean, I don't think these guys have had a, a you know a great season or that, but um, I think it's always hard. I think Louis touched on it a wee bit, but um, I think East Allanshire uh, likes your uh, Berwick, and that it's always tough to come down. To a league, uh, it's a wee bit of the unknown. Is the feeling been great? Are, are, are you looking to obviously build for the future? Well, the foot making excuses, and I do agree. I don't think we've done well enough this season. I think everybody, every player, management staff, you know, the board, supporters, everybody will know that we've not done well enough this year. But in fairness, I mean, the gaffer wrote the job three or four weeks before the season started. He didn't. He had like five signed players. They had to get a full team signed before the Betfred Cup, which, you know, when you most teams do their recruitment round about January time, or around about that time, the gaffer had four weeks to put together 14, 15 players to go and play in a Betfred Cup. Uh, so he maybe now to get the squad that he wanted in terms of exact. We do have a young group. Maybe that was all that was available at that time, but even with the group that we do have, I do believe we should have we should have been doing better than we have this year. Uh, yeah. But I'm confident in the future. I trust what the gaffer is going to go and try and do and bring players in. Uh, but you just got to play it by year, really. Obviously, this has put a massive stop to things at the moment. Um, getting players in and nobody knows where they are financially and stuff like that. So I'm confident. I trust in what the, the new board and that are doing. So hopefully that all works out for us. And, uh, you know, I think it was Berwick Rangers and East Stollinshire, but they announced that they're obviously, you know, uh, loyal to you guys. They're obviously going to pay you your, your, your wages and stuff. And, and, and that's, that's there's a lot to be said about that because not all clubs are, uh, even higher up, are, are, are willing to do that. Ah, exactly. It is massive for, for the clubs to be doing things like that. Um, shows that, that they're loyal to their players because football is not always the most loyal game. Uh, and I think that that might pay off in the long run in terms of loyalty to players. And if I'm speaking on my behalf, that you feel almost obliged to be loyal to the club after they've stood by you through what is undoubtedly a hard time for them as well. You know, like I touched on the new board, 
they've been putting a lot of effort in off the off the park uh, to get funding and stuff like that in. Uh, stuff that we didn't really see as players. Um, and then this could all brought to a, to a halt, really, but they've stuck by us. So Obviously, you were you know, a, a sort of featured on a view from the terrace and you've done your sort of community or fan day. Um, was it great to be playing, you know, uh, in front of, you know, more than a thousand people at uh, Shieldfield? Uh, it was brilliant. I think it was a great idea for the for the club as well. But that's the thing. Berwick have got a massive fan base. It's a, it's a big club. And I firmly believe that if we can get a good team on the park that starts winning games of football, that we'll get we get the type of fans back every week because supporters want to see Berwick doing well. It's a it's a good good place in terms of Berwick upon Tweed. That's everybody loves a loves a football. So if we're doing well, I'm sure that they'll come back and watch us. If we're not doing well, then I can't really blame them for them coming. Yeah, and it's the same, and it's not just the same with Berwick. Obviously, it's the same with all clubs. Obviously, success. Uh, people want to be involved in the sort of top teams because they're successful. It's the guys that stay after uh, after things happen, obviously, that you, you have to look out for. But, um, yeah, Louis touched on that as well. Obviously, it looks like, um, you know, Berwick are, um, hopefully, I don't know, have you noticed? Well, you, you probably wouldn't have seen too much after the, the fan day because, obviously, of everything that's happened. But are you hoping that that fan day um, kind of gets more people back to Shieldfield? I hope so. I hope so. Hopefully they enjoyed their day. I listened to Louis's podcast and he was spot on with what he was saying in terms of it was probably the coldest day of the year they were played in. I remember going out for the warm-up and it started snowing. Um, but we still managed to get a good crowd in. So I'd imagine there's actually more that would be willing to come if it was a nicer day. Yeah. You know, so these things are good. And like I say, if we start doing well, I'm sure the fans will come back and start supporting the team again. Absolutely, man. And, you know, uh, I think all the teams... Uh, well, we don't know what's going to happen with like Sakelby and Bonnie Rig in, in terms of going forward if they're going to be in the league or if they re, uh, restructure. But are you are you sort of looking at other teams in terms of like Sabonis, the former East Juniors, and then obviously we've got the West of Scotland League. Are you just looking at that, um, saying you know these teams are going to be up for it? Is it going to be harder for like Zaberic and, and other teams to to um, go for the title or go for promotion? I don't know. I don't know. I think if you look at the, the group that now, the league that now, you've got Bonner against Kelly who are doing really well. They've been really consistent. Um, and then you do have bonus and teams like that. So the league's going to get better. But if I'm quite confident that we're going to get better over the years as well. Like I said, the drop down in the league, it's, it's a culture shock for a lot of people. A lot of people didn't really know the league when they first signed. You know, I, I, I believe we, we'll get better as well. So as the league gets better, I think we'll get better. So you never, you never tell. We don't know where we'll be in three, four years' time. Yeah, we could yeah. Be in a position where we could be challenging for the league, or fingers yeah. crossed, already maybe even up there. So we just yeah. got to play it by ear, really. Yeah, absolutely, Kevin. And uh, obviously, when I when I talk about this, because that's a sort of talking point. Uh, you know, the the East Juniors, how how you know how good they are and how well they've done coming into the East of Scotland and Lowland League, but uh, West of Juniors, but. I think even the likes of Cumbernauld Colts, um, you know, they've they've made a few signings, uh, and uh, you know they've basically said that they're going to try and go for it next season. So uh, it looks like there's there's, there's going to be you know um, six to eight teams all looking to to compete uh, for, at the very top. Yeah, that's it. The the thing is, teams will go each each year and and try and have a go at it because there's really ambitious teams doing in this league. And uh, I'm a firm believer that in the next four or five years' time, there's going to be a, the Scottish leagues are going to look so much different to what they are now because of the ambition that the clubs in our league and in the East of Scotland and in the West of Scotland, and then you've got the Highland League teams as well. So I think the leagues will look so much different to what they do at the minute. Are you a Hibs fan? Or are you? Um... No, I'm, a, I'm actually a Hearts fan. Oh, God. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Um, I I've been asking the boys obviously what jinx should happen next. Uh, was it uh, on that note? Me was it was it tough for you playing for Hibs or is it the sort of thing that goes out your mind because obviously you're playing no, for a, a it team. was never it was never a problem for me in terms of playing for Hibs. It was always it was pretty easy. But everybody around about the training centre knew I was a Hearts fan, so it was a bit of, a bit of banter. And I used to drive in with Ryan Porteous because we were good pals, uh-huh. staying close to each other, and he's obviously a massive Hibs fan. 
and I was a massive Hearts fan. So we and we both played beside each other. So there's plenty plenty of banter in that going on between the two of us whenever Hearts played Hibs. And unfortunately for me, Hibs had had the better of it over the last three or four years. Um, and obviously with Hearts sitting at the bottom of the league now, try and avoid them when I can. <laughs> Aye, quite right, mate. I, I didn't blame you because I, I could only imagine, uh, imagine the penalties you would have got. Like, but, Aye, 100%. Uh, uh, I, uh, well, basically, um, I've, I've kind of asked everyone this, but it's obviously what it's on everyone's mind, and I know it's a hard, hard call on what's going to happen. But what, what do you think should happen uh, in terms of where we go next in Scottish football uh, with what's happening? I, th- I, th- I don't know. I think it's a really hard, it's a hard subject because there's some teams in some leagues that are so far in front. So you've got Cove Rangers in League Two. Who, in my opinion, would probably feel aggrieved if they didn't get promoted. You've got Celtic, who would probably feel aggrieved if they didn't win the league. Maybe Stranraer, teams will feel aggrieved if they didn't go down because they're so far below the rest of them. But then you've got the our league, who Kelty and Bonnerig are so close together, so they're, you can't really say, ah, you deserve it because you're top of the league now, because that's not really fair. So I think it's got to a stage where I don't think you can punish anybody by putting them down. Mm-hmm. But I think you you maybe go to promote more teams. So maybe promote just whatever teams are in the playoff position, promote them up and just make the league bigger for one season if we can. And maybe make it a bigger relegation. I think that's the only way really about it. Um, because you can't really give, relegate a team that are four points behind by, I don't know, 10 games to go, nine games to go. Yeah, it's the same. You can't even really promote Kelty. I know Highland, the Highland League have gave the league to Brora, but you can't give the league to Kelty when Bonner have still to play Kelty. And what is it? Two points? Three points? Uh, uh, well, the the Kelty are six points clear, but uh, Bonner have Bonner. a game in hand yeah. plus that yeah. game in New Dundas Park. So, yeah, <laughs> no, no, an easy yes. call on that one. Uh, to be fair, I didn't envy whoever's going to make the decision because you're not going to keep everybody happy. Team, there's so many teams going to be be fuming the decision. Absolutely, mate. Hope everybody stays safe and looks after themselves, and everybody will get back together for next season. I can't imagine any but any more games will be played this year. But whatever happens, hopefully we can get football back sooner rather than later. Well, it was brilliant talking to you, Kev. As I, I keep saying this, but it is true. I really appreciate the the chat with you guys. I mean, I don't, you know, we couldn't do it without you guys coming on and, and obviously uh, chatting football. And, uh, you know, from what I've heard and the messages I've received in that, like people are really appreciating it. And it's, it's obviously good to get a wee bit of normal football chat. Uh, it's all up in the air, obviously, at the moment. But, nah, uh, thanks to the likes of yourself and Lewis and, and uh, guys at Berwick and that, I'm sure I'm sure there'll be a few more chats with, with the guys from the club and that, just obviously, again, to get in touch and whatnot and uh, aye uh, stay safe pal and, and thanks for coming on alright top man cheers